Alrighty, well, everyone's here and we've got a lot to get through. So I'm gonna start things off with a video, <laughs> a little bit about uh, Hank Aaron and some of the stuff he did uh, after, you know, after, after playing baseball, he was right. involved in baseball all his life, but he was really, uh, I'm finding out he was really uh, like the kids, you know, which I guess we're gonna get more into. So just gotta figure this out. Just bear with me. I'm not too good with the tech as everybody who comes all, to all these knows. I need to share my screen. Okay. Ah, there we go. All right. You guys all see my Twitter now? Your Twitter? Pardon? <laughs> no? Not that, yet. That's not a euphemism. Oh, uh, okay, there we go. Oh, here we go. Okay. There it is. Okay. Excellent. I did figure this out. All right. Just give that a refresh and a full screen. You know, I think these kids need to understand the power of the African American heroes here in Atlanta, Georgia. Today, they're getting a great opportunity to learn a lot about. Martin Luther King, and also Henry Aaron, two of the greatest. This is an unbelievable opportunity for them to grow as a person. And I think, you know, we talk about it in baseball terms, the better you know yourself, the better you're going to be. And, I, and as soon as you know yourself, the better you're going to have a chance of being successful. Hank Aaron is probably, for me, a personal hero of mine, a cultural icon, you know, a guy who paved the way like Jackie Robinson and Jesse Owen and Muhammad Ali that paved the way for us to get another opportunity to advance in sports. It means everything here in Atlanta. Hey, Hi, Andy. <laughs> in my 23 years that I played baseball, I had one thing in mind each year. I knew that I could do better than I did the last year. I got to have a purpose. I ended up down here in Atlanta in an office right across the hall from Martin Luther King. I'm just gonna do the best I can one day at a time. We can all be great ball players. We can only do what we can do for ourselves. Try to do the very best that you can do the very, the very, very best that you can do as a human being. So many of them feel like if he can play baseball, I can too. And that's what makes you feel good. But I am so thankful to all of you guys traveled so far away. Good luck to all of you. But the most important thing is to just do the very best, the best that you can do. Thanks for your, your attention there. So I'll just introduce Bud to everybody. I've, uh, he's been following the Jets since before they were Jets. So that's uh, how I got to, <laughs> got to hear him uh, phoning up uh, 1290 faithfully after the games. Uh, he's an old Thrasher fan from Atlanta from way back. So, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and he, you know, he follows the Braves uh, as well more than anyone I know. So he's a perfect, uh, Perfect person to be hosting tonight uh, with Jen, who's always the perfect person to be hosting. So I'll just turn it over to, to Bud and Jen. Okay. And I gotta get, oh yeah. Does everybody have the link to the quiz before I? Uh... Okay. <laughs> Everybody's in? Everyone's got the quiz ready? Okay. Okay. Um, okay, we'll go with, Question one. 
What was Hank's real name? Harvey Lewis Aaron, Henry Lewis Aaron, Hendrick Lewis Aaron, or Hank Lewis Aaron? Oh, my, Barb asked what happened. Uh, we're thinking. <laughs> I was wondering what that what that shadow was. I didn't know if that was like the wheel spinning in your head, Mike, or, or what. <laughs> um, lots of stuff going on behind the scenes to get this uh, little window up <laughs> on the left with the, with the quiz. Uh, I got to get logged in myself. It's okay, we got five minutes to answer. <laughs> do, 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 do. All right. So while people are answering, you want me to share a quick story? You can, yeah, whatever, whatever works for you. Typically, sure. So, yeah. so it's it's interesting that you showed if you show, you showed that video. The video led off with uh, Marquise Grissom, who um, single handedly gave me probably the most joy I've ever had in my life, other than marrying my wife and having two kids because he caught the final out of the 1995 world series, which I was at for, you know, the Braves lone world series championship amongst all the misses that we've had here. Um, but Marquise grew up on the South side of Atlanta and he told a story during Hank's uh, memorial service on Tuesday um, that I hadn't heard before. And it was that um, he heard Hank speak about doing do laying the foundation for those who come after you if you will and he learned about what Hank did in his years after he left the playing field and Marquise Grissom had a fantastic major league career now he runs a academy focused on um, black and minority kids on the south side of Atlanta who are interested in playing baseball Marquise is very involved in that foundation. Um, everything from putting on camps, baseball skills, life lessons, um, college scholarships, things like that. And Marquise said a couple of years ago, he got Hank to come out and visit the site where he works with these kids. And he said at the memorial on Tuesday that it was like validation that what he had heard Hank talk about when Marquise was young, that he was now being able to pay it forward as well. So I thought it was really cool that you showed that video and I've seen that before, that video. Um, but as soon as I saw Marquise, I thought that would be really cool to, to share that story because I didn't know that until Marquise was on, was, was at the Memorial on Tuesday sharing that. I thought that was pretty cool. Which uh, foundation is he involved in, Bud? The one you know, I can't, I, can't th I can't think of the name of it. I knew you were going to ask me that. I'll have to look it up and share it with you guys. Um, Marquise's son, by the way, for whatever it's worth, is a pretty highly regarded young prospect in the Braves organization. He was drafted out of high school just a couple years ago. And, of course, a lot of the minor leagues did not – well, basically all the minor leagues did not play last year here in the States due to the pandemic. Um, but, yeah, I'll have to look up the name of his foundation because he's – it, it, it's it's grown pretty big in the few years that Marquise has been, you know, getting it off the ground since he retired from playing in the majors. I think he's been retired for six or seven years now. But it's not the Chasing the Dream Foundation. It's no, a, no, it's 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 a it's a foundation that is geared toward giving, um, you know, you know, teenagers, you know, who are black and are minorities, um, you know, an opportunity to get some specialized baseball skills. Um, Again, I think Marquise played in the majors for 16 or 17 years, so he's got tons of connections. Um, but they have a lot of scouts come in, and they have a lot of, um, you know, relationships that he's built and that others in the foundation have built that, you know, help lead to, you know, some of these kids getting an opportunity to keep playing after high school. And Sorry, it's something on my computer. Um, you know, even if they don't get drafted, an opportunity to go play in college and so forth. Sure. Okay, we have three votes, Michael. Yeah, one of them is mine. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Usually they wait uh, for me to vote last because uh, I wrote the quiz. So, well, <laughs> so that's yeah. I, it's not fair for me to answer quick. 
By my calculations, we would need four votes uh, for everyone to have voted. Who's not playing? Um, well, Bud's not playing. I'm not, well, not playing. playing. <laughs> and that makes makes more sense. Yeah, I'd say the answers too, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the correct answer was B, Henry Lewis Heron. Question two. Where was Hank Aaron born? Mobile, Atlanta, Jacksonville, or Indianapolis? I won't give any hints away. Yeah, you can talk about anything, but don't give away the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I will only say that that um, I was born in one of the cities on this list as well. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know, shocker, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's my Indiana accent that gives it away. <laughs> I've been to Atlanta. That's about it. You've been? Have you been just through the airport? Because I think most of the people that I know from Winnipeg have been like, "Yeah, I've been to the airport at least once." You know, changing flights or whatever. Sure, I've been to. Atlanta. No, I I went out. It was only one evening, but I was out for dinner and beer at the World of Beers. Ah, okay. I, I know. To, oh, I was supposed to be going to Atlanta in June for a conference down there, but they've moved it to online for us. So hmm. supposed to be there for five days. So and disappointed when that got canceled for us. That is that is one thing that Atlanta does really well is it is a major. I mean, a major destination for conventions business meetings and so forth and obviously the city's taken a tremendous hit the past year because obviously those people aren't coming anymore like yourself so mm -hmm. I and i wonder to... and i wonder if if that will be kind of the status quo moving forward because i mean i love to travel i don't travel a whole lot for work but you know there is something about not having to be at the airport at 5 a.m. to go fly somewhere if you can just talk to someone like this and yep. still get things done. I do value the face-to-face, -face, so I do hope some of that comes back. Me too. In Atlanta, the night you all uh, voted in Trump. So. Do what now? The night you all voted in Trump, I was in Atlanta. I should have oh, looked God. you up. Buddy. You should have taken me back home with you. <laughs> 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 Honey, I'm leaving. It's over. <laughs> do we have two votes, Jen? Jen? We have two. Oh, okay, there's my third. <laughs> okay, it was Mobile. Question three. Aaron decided to pursue baseball after hearing whose inspiring speech? Ernie Banks, Cool Papa Bell, Oscar Charleston, or Jackie Robinson? Interesting choices here. Um, actually, kind of interesting that two of the four choices on this list um, were born on January 31st. Well, hmm. I didn't know that. Yes. That's interesting. Yes. There's actually a third um, famous baseball player who was also also has a birth or yeah has a birthday today this one's still alive he's not on the list but do we have two jen we do not oh people are people are googling so <laughs> google uh, <laughs> all the questions are open books so everybody gets on google and uh learns the answers everybody mm. gets everything right that's how where, how, it, how it works where, now, where, now we have to where was this when i was in school <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's like my kids will complain about something. I'm like, really? You're complaining? You don't have to go sit in a library and physically open books all day to do research. Enough. <laughs> Back and forth to the card drawer. Oh. oh. <laughs> uh, the answer was Jackie Robinson. Yes. Jackie Robinson, actually, it's, and I, for, I forgot about this, but I looked it up. Um, before the Braves moved to Atlanta, the Atlanta had a baseball team. They played minor league baseball. They were the 
for lack of a better term, the double A affiliated, the Los Angeles Dodgers, or well, then the Brooklyn Dodgers. So if you think about it, it, it goes, you know, major league, triple A, double A. It's kind of like the NHL, the AHL, and the ECHL. So basically the version, the ECHL version uh, was a team called the Atlanta Crackers. And they played um, in an old ballpark off Ponce Leon Avenue in what is now the Midtown section of Atlanta. And the Dodgers came through in 1949 and played an, ex- an exhibition game against the Atlanta Crackers. I mean, it, it'd be like it'd be like the Iceman. It, it'd be like if the Jets went down to Jacksonville and played the Iceman. You know, their their Double A team. Yep. Um, but the ironic thing is, um, it was a couple of years after Jackie became the first black player to play Major League Baseball, and the Dodgers had another black player on the roster at the time, the famous catcher Roy Campanella. That was the first time that there had been a professional baseball game played in the city of Atlanta where there was a team that had black players. And the ironic thing about that is that game was played on April 8th, 1949. Date may not seem to mean a whole lot until you think what happened exactly 25 years to the day after that, which was about four miles away where old Atlanta Fulton County Stadium stood 25 years after Jackie and Roy Campanelle took the field at Ponce de Leon Park, Hank Aaron broke Babe Ruth's home run record. 25 years to the day. Oh, perfect. And the story is that, and the story is that Hank skipped school to uh, listen to, um, to this, um, this speech. Okay, question four. As a rookie, which team did Hank lead to the 1952 Negro League World Series Championship? Was it Kansas City Monarchs, Baltimore Elite Giants, Indianapolis Clowns, Oscar Charleston? And Hank didn't play outfield for this team. Okay. Played shortstop. And at this time, he was still batting with a cross-handed grip, which if you're a right-handed hitter, you're taught to put the right hand on top and the left hand on the bottom and hit this way. And I can't even picture what it would be like to try to swing opposite. It would probably look as graceful as me trying to stand on a pair of ice skates, which I plan on doing one day when I get to Winnipeg one day, if the world returns to normal and you guys will open the borders, which I don't blame you for opening the borders right now because I wouldn't want us coming up there either, but that's another story. Um, It was actually the year after this that a minor league coach taught Hank to get his hands in the right order, if you will, on the baseball bat. And a year after that, (laughs) Hank was in the major leagues hitting home runs. It just shows you just what a – what an unbelievable just athlete he was to be hitting cross-handed. I mean, I, yeah. you know, think about holding a hockey stick the wrong way and, you know, you know, scoring goals in, you know, the, the, you know, ECHL or the American league. It's like, good gracious. So we're almost halfway through the quiz, but we've used a little bit over half the time. So just uh, so you know, uh, at about uh, eight thirty-five, Zoom is going to pull the plug. We've got to, okay. Yeah, we got a hard forty-minute limit. I'll talk fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do want to get through everything, but uh, yes, it's all fascinating. Do we have two, Jen? No, we have one oh, vote. Okay, excellent. Good. Yep. Yeah, you folks are going to have to think this time. There, now be, we have two votes. There'll be a little bit of jumping around from website to website because <laughs> I, I couldn't find uh, enough on Wikipedia to make it all. And now we have three votes with one correct answer. Oh. <laughs> Indianapolis Clowns was the oh, correct I answer. Wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess in here. Good a time as any to show you this. Oh. Uh-huh. Wow. Nice. Okay. Lightning round, this could change at the end. <laughs> Looks like Aaron's <laughs> running away with it. Okay, question five. Which two major league teams offered Aaron contracts? Atlanta Braves and New York Giants, New York Giants and Boston Braves, Atlanta Braves and Milwaukee Brewers, 
or Milwaukee Brewers and Boston Braves. Mm. I will tell you the difference was $50 a month is how the story goes. Oh, wow. Oh. And to think about the seismic shift in baseball history, if that other team had ponied up $51 a month more and far more important, the, the difference in the path that Hank would have taken in the second half of his life. Cause obviously he, pl- he picked the team that, you know, ended up in a place where is widely considered the cradle of the civil rights movement. Was there a really big difference in salary or, pay between between teams it was it was a signing it it was basically a signing bonus if you will right so um and you know the the braves organization offered 50 dollars a month more than this other organization and hank has said that's what that's kind of what it came down to he would have had a really good career either way you know, but to think it, it, you know, just how just something, you know, which seems just so minuscule, you know, but at the end of the day, if someone offers you a little more money and everything else is equal, you're probably going to go with the extra money. So Wayne Gretzky almost became a Vancouver Canuck on a very similar type of deal. It was basically decided by the agent. Right. Right. Okay. We have all the votes. We have one correct answer and two incorrect answer. The correct answer was New York Giants and Boston Braves. Yay. Hank would have been Hank would have been teammates in the same outfield with Willie Mays. And before Hank died, Hank and Willie were considered the two greatest living baseball players still with us. Wow. <laughs> Did I pull ahead? <laughs> well. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I did get that one right. You're in the same spot in the standings where my thrashers usually sat, which was holding everybody up. (laughs) Okay, question six. Where did a security guard open fire on Hank? At a skills camp in the swamps of Waycross, Georgia. Up in Fairhope, a wealthy suburb of Mobile. In Boston, when Aaron accidentally walked into a poorly marked construction site. Or in Indianapolis, where Hank accidentally walked into a neighborhood where locals felt he didn't belong. Was anyone surprised it was Boston Braves and not uh, Atlanta Braves? For question four? I didn't even know there was a Boston Braves. Question five, sorry. That's where the franchise started, 1871. Actually, um, I was supposed to go to Boston to see the Braves play the Red Sox um, at Fenway Park last year. It was about a week away from booking that trip when everything shut down down here. One of the places I was going to go was Boston University's campus because they still have a, a small part of Braves Stadium incorporated into their university's baseball field. Um, but yeah, the Braves moved from Boston to Milwaukee after the 1952 season. They were the first um, baseball team to change cities in half a century. And then after a 12 year run in Milwaukee, they moved to Atlanta and became the first professional sports team in the Deep South um, after the 1965 season. And I can't offer anything on number six. I'll give it away. So, oh yeah. <laughs> so watching the Braves play the Red Sox would be like watching the Jets play the Coyotes, I guess. Yeah, yeah, to a certain extent. Yeah, there, there's been a little time that it's passed, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I still, I still want the prospect of a of an outdoor game down here between the uh, Jets and the Flames, the ultimate ghost of Atlanta hockey pass bowl game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, all the votes are in. The correct answer was at a skills camp in the swamps of Waycross, Georgia. Tell us a little more about <laughs> I've I've been to Waycross. I used to cover ball in Brunswick, which is an hour away. And yes, that swamp is that swamp is massive. It's um, you know, you know, the story goes that, you know, Hank was was separated from the team. They were in Waycross getting laundry done and, and getting things done. The camp was outside of town. He missed the bus. Uh, the security guard sees a young black guy trying to get back into the camp and starts shooting, which night early 1950s south that's not surprising so he was coming in from the swamp, not not on the bus yet yeah. do what he was coming in on this from the swamp not on yes the bus. he was coming in through the swamp that swamp yeah. is 483,000 acres it's actually a national wildlife refuge you do not want to get lost in that swamp okay question seven Aaron's breaking of Babe Ruth's record and associated racist hate mail was alluded to by which comic strip in August 73? Doonesbury, Blondie, Beetle Bailey, or Peanuts? Yeah, I've heard, I've heard people just, you know, and we, we've, We've talked about this for years, and but but the stories have kind of come back in the light, obviously, in the nine days since Hank's passing. You, you think about the the immense pressure upon breaking a record that is as hallowed as as Babe Ruth's career home run record was, but then you add this unbelievably you know heavy element of having to do it while you know the FBI is dispatched to protect your kids. And, and all the hatred and all that that comes with it, to be able to not just break the record, but to do it with kind of the grace and the dignity and the humility that he did. Um, I think as the years go by, we look back from it, it, it really is a testament to the man that he was and the example that he set for, for so many of us. Okay, all votes are in. The correct answer was peanuts. Oh. <laughs> we have a shift. Oh, uh, we have a oh. shift. <laughs> okay. Right on. Question eight. Whoop. You know what's well, there we go. What role did Hank Aaron take on in 1982, making him one of the first minorities in Major League Baseball upper level management? Senior Vice President, Vice President and Director of Player Development, President, Baseball Operations and General Manager, or Coordinator, Latin American Operations. You know, while you guys are thinking about that, there is a title that Hank Aaron could have had that really would have been something else if it had came to fruition, and I've always wondered what it would have been like. So Ted Turner bought the Atlanta Braves in 1976. Ted Turner is the is the guy who put the Braves on cable TV from coast to coast in the late seventies and early eighties and ended up creating a fan base that spans nationwide and kind of continues to this day. Ted Turner wanted Hank Aaron to be the manager of the Atlanta Braves and actually offered him the job on two separate occasions in the late seventies. Frank Robinson had become the first black man to become a manager in the major leagues in 1975. And but Hank didn't want to do that. And I think it speaks back to, you know, Hank's desire to and, and I won't I won't go too deep because if I do, I might give away the answer. But 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 Hank's desire to to kind of build the team, if you will, without being the one, you know, out there kind of in the limelight calling the shots. Right. It would have been really easy for someone with an ego to say, well, yeah, I'll be the manager, you know. You know, l let me fill the Paul Maurice role. Let me sit behind the bench and talk to the media every day. A a that wasn't what Hank was about. Um, as an aside, one of the times that Ted Turner wanted Hank to take the job, ended up going to a young coach from the Yankees named Bobby Cox, who eventually would manage the Braves for parts of four decades and was inducted into the Hall of Fame a few years ago himself. Okay, we have all our votes in. The correct answer was Vice President and Director of Player Development. Yep. 
good job, bud. Keep keeping a lid on it. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mike is closing the window, Aaron. Oh, oh. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, turn your points for question 10, though. Question nine. Among many others, Hank Aaron has won which of these awards? Thurgood Marshall Lifetime Achievement Award from the NAACP's Legal Defense Fund, the Presidential Medal of Freedom from George W. Bush, C, both of the above, or D, none of the above? When, um, when the Braves opened Turner Field in 1997, that Turner Field served as the Olympic Stadium in 1996, and then it was retrofitted, there was a really strong outcry of public support to name the stadium after Hank. I remember I wanted it named after Hank as well. It ended up being named after Ted Turner. But they named the street outside Hank Aaron Drive. And the address is 755 Hank Aaron Drive. And it still is today to commemorate the 755 home runs. Um, that stadium now has been retrofitted again because that's what we do in Atlanta. We lose hockey teams and we welcome conventioners and we build stadiums every time we turn around. My alma mater, Georgia State University, plays football there. But the street outside is still named 755 Hank Aaron Drive. That's still the mailing address of the stadium, even though baseball hadn't been played there in several years. Oh, boy. They can't, yeah, they can't rename the other street where, the, where they play now. It's just too disruptive, I guess. Yeah, it's just, you know, I, I actually went down there because, okay, we got two answers. Okay, go ahead, Mike. Yeah. Winnipeg, we have a Milt Stiegel, Stiegel Drive but they moved the stadium to the other side of the state city. <laughs> <laughs> the street's still there. So. Does anyone remember Thurgood Marshall from the three quizzes ago? Yeah, Aaron. Yeah. Sounds, sounds familiar. That's awesome. This is working. If the answer, correct answer was both of the above. Yeah. <clears throat> now he's won a lot more awards than that, but- uh, Tons. Tons, yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, Last question coming up, so I'll just show you this one more time. Ooh. So question 10 is our lightning round buzz. So this gives everyone a chance to catch up. You get double the points, but no time to Google because it's a, it's a race. <laughs> so it's like, this is like going to a shootout. Yeah. I'll I'll save my diatribe about the shootout for later. So. Oh, we got four minutes. So. <laughs> Is everybody ready? Oh, I'm, my fingers are twitching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Lightning round question 10. Although the Braves are resisting a name change, what new name is gaining popularity? Atlanta Thrashers, the Atlanta Hammers after Hammer and Hank, the Atlanta Flames, or the Atlanta Chiefs? Two votes. Wow, people are Googling during the lightning round. <laughs> the audacity. Yeah. How dare. All right. I do. And the, re and the results are in. That's it. We have a winner. Okay. Congratulations. I would I would be fine with the flames because I never saw the flames play. Mm-hmm. I actually did see the Atlanta Chiefs play. In the old North American Soccer oh, League. Okay. Days. Yeah, and what were the Chiefs again? North American Soccer League. They actually oh. won the NASL. So there were two Chiefs. There was Chiefs in the late 60s and Chiefs in the late 70s, early 80s. I saw the Chiefs in 80, 81, 82. Uh, the, the Chiefs in 68 won the league championship. So, so. It's them, it's the 95 Braves, and it's Atlanta United in 2018, and that's it for championships here. So, Alrighty. But I'll gladly claim a Stanley Cup. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, that was really fun. Thank you so much, bud. That's yeah, it. thanks for having me. I'll have to jump on one of these nights and play. Yeah. I love trivia. So. Okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good time. It's yeah. a small group, but I like it small, but uh, yeah. It, it Absolutely. Is, so congratulations, Aaron, too. Like, um, just, uh, I don't know if everyone knows what Aaron won. Um, we're making a donation to Hank Aaron's uh, Chasing the Dream Foundation that we all chipped in for, including Aaron, but she gets the tax receipt for, for all that. <laughs> I don't know if this is any good to you up, 
good to us up here in Canada, but uh, we'll find out anyway. Yeah. I, I would just claim it anyway. <laughs> if, they, <laughs> if they audit you, you can give them the 20 bucks back. <laughs> but, uh, they've, 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 they've never asked to see my receipts. Nope. Yeah. Nope. All righty. Okay. All right. All right. It was good. It was fun. I enjoyed right. it, guys. Thanks again. I appreciate it. Come again. All right. We'll do it. Y'all have a great week. Yeah, go Jets. Go. Night, guys. Go Jets. Bye, guys. Go.